good morning to all of you welcome to the session on design of compression members whereas in the earlier videos we have studied about the analysis of compression members of column sections now we are also we are going to study about the column section in the coming videos let us study about analysis and design of struts or principal rafter now before going into the session before taking up the problems let us have a look on the 3d models that has been generated for the truss and for the column sections so once we see this visualize the structures it will be very useful for us to design the members so let me first take you to the 3d model session then afterwards continue with the designing of the column sections normally the column sections will be called as stanchions we'll go into the 3d session now welcome to this 3d model session it will be very interesting and we can understand the basic concepts of the struts the different types of compression members that you come across in the field now this is a typical isometric view type of truss i have done with two base a truss that has been covered with ac sheet is a sheet and along with the ridge let me hide you hide this sheet and the ridge you can see the typical truss i can show you the front view of this this is the principal rafter which will be normally a compression member if this truss is subjected to vertical loads if it is it to inclined load this may be subjected to either a compressive load or a tensile load so if it is sub this truss is subjected to the vertical loads after analyzing which you already studied in your first year engineering mechanics the analysis of trusses by joints or by method of sections or graphical method so we are not going to analyze here all these things loads will be given for that we are going to design and this members may be subjected to compressive load we call them as struts these are called as principal rafter which is a compression member when i start in my other videos on analysis and design of trusses we'll study more about that i'll once again show you the 3d mo model there and we'll try to understand more on that now i'm going going to insist much on this tension and compression members my view is right now on column sections these are the column sections the end supports of the truss are the column sections the load will be transferred from this truss on to the columns so we are going to calculate the reaction here that reaction itself will be the load that is acting on the column so right now we are going to understand this designing of this columns this column it can be either a single angle section sorry single i section or combination of sections as i said earlier it can be either a laced system or a batten system a built up column i can find this column here so based on the load that is acting on this column 
we are going to design either a single I section like this or a single I section with core plates on either side or two I sections joined together by lacing system or by batten system or channels joined together either face to face or back to back and all this, those things we are going to study it in different chapter, different session. So, when I take up all those things, you can study over there. Right now, I am concentrating on designing of this either with I section with single I section or I section with core plates on either side. All these things let us study later. I will teach you about uh, the angles to be designed either with a single angle section or double angle section when I take up the chapter on analysis and design of angle uh, compression members or struts. Okay? Now, let us go into the problems and understand how exactly the designing could be done, the procedure of designing. Well, we observe the 3D models of the struts, the compression members at the top, that is the top chord members and the stanchions that the column members. In this session, you have already observed that the single I sections have been used there. You can go with the multiple either I section with the cover plates or channels placed back to back or channels placed face to face or you can go with either lacing system or batten system. All these things you will study in the different videos, different sessions. Now, here our main intention is to design the column section. In this session, I am going to design the columns only for the axial load that is acting on the member. Remaining types a column subjected to axial load and uniaxial bending or biaxial bending, all these things we will study in the later sessions. And let me teach you how to design the columns for the given loading system. Let me take the problem. Now, it is a axially loaded column with 1100 kilo newton. The length of the column is 4 meters and it has been given with the end condition that it is adequately restrained in position, but not in direction at both ends. It means to say that it is both ends are inched. Let us look into the table 11 and know about the end condition, the value of k there. So, now it is axial load that has been given. Let us factor it to get the factor load by one multiplying the axial load with 1.5. Now, find out the area of the section required. It is a load divided by permissible compressive stress in the member. We do not know that. The maximum FI value we are going to take here, it is 250 Newton per millimeter square. So, approximately we can assume the permissible stresses with this range. But this range is not a rule. Based on the axial load, we can go on changing. If the loads are more, you can assume higher values of 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 f times of the Fi value. Maximum limited to the yield stress of the material and that is equal to Fi equal to 250 Newton per millimeter square as we are taking 250 in this case. So, here I assume 150 as the axial compressive stress. So, we get the area as 110 centimeter square. Looking into the steel table, we will find out the area where it comes. It is 110 here. I will go with the next value a little bit more. We are going to assume say some 15 to 20 percent more and look into the steel table. But in the steel table for ISHB, the maximum area is 117.89 centimeter square. This is the maximum area you can find in the steel table. Okay, I will just go with that, whether this section will be okay to take up the load of 1100 kilo newton. If it is not so, then we can go with the high section 
a stanchion or rolled steel section with cover plate. If this is not sufficient enough to bear the given axial load, then we are going with a cover plate. Even if that is not sufficient enough to take up the load, we can go with two I sections joined together either by lacing system or by batten system. So, those videos, in those videos you can observe how the design has been done. Okay, let me check. So, I am taking the area as 117.89 centimeter square. So, we are going to take the road steel section as ISHP 450. For that, I got the properties like area, the depth of this section is 450 mm and width of the flange as 250 mm. We can also note on the other properties like thickness of the flange, thickness of the web 11.3 mm, all these values you are noted and along with the radius of gyration. I am not going here with the moment of inertia. If at all I am designing the section myself, designing the section mean to say any it split like I section is made by having a separate web and separate flanges, I can look into this and get the radius of gyration. Now, for the rolled section, we have got the ready made radius of gyration. So, we will make use of this property and see that how to get the compressive axial compressive stress, permissible stress from the code and then multiply that by the area of the section, see that the load carrying capacity of that member is greater than 1100 kilo Newton. So, from here onwards the procedure of solving the problem, it is almost same like the analysis problem. Whatever the earlier videos we have shown you, the procedure of that same thing holds good here also. So, I do not think you will feel very difficult here, only to the previous step you are supposed to know. Once you are calculated choosing the section, if you have chosen the section, after that this remaining procedures are same like analysis problem. Therefore, in the examination, if it is either given with the analysis or design, you note on the simple difference and go with the common procedure of solving the problem. Now, by looking into the buckling class, it is a single I section that has been given. For that, always we calculate the property like H by B F. You have a look here, H by B F. If it is greater than 1.2, what will what should be taken? Less than 1.2, what should be taken? We will just understand that. In analysis, we have done all these types, both the types you have solved. Now, H we add 450, B we add 250, it is 1.8, that means it is greater than 1.2. So, we are going to have a look. Let us have a look on the thickness of the flange. It is 13.7 less than 40 it comes here. Otherwise, it would have gone there other places. So, buckling class curve you are going to look for z z axis A and the buckling class of B for y y axis. That means, we have to calculate the F C D value in both the directions z z and y y. Then afterwards, we will ca after calculating the F C D, we will take the minimum value and for that minimum value, we will multiply by the area and get the load carrying capacity and that should be greater than the given load. I am repeating this procedure again and again so that you can remember it. So, end conditions for the slenderness ratio, adequately restrained in position at both the ends. In but not in direction at the both the ends. Therefore, that means to say it is a both ends inched problem. For that, the value of k will be taken as 1, 1 times of the actual length. Yes. So, I am going to have the effective length k l as 1 times of the actual length, it is 4000 mm. Now, slenderness ratio along the z z axis, it is scaled by r z z, r z z already we have noted down and it works out to be 21.62. So, for that let us calculate the compressive stress looking into the table 9a from the page 40 of the IS 800 code. 
the slenderness ratio lambda it is 21.62 so it lies between 20 and 30 we will go with the tabular column as already you know about this procedure of solving the problem getting the by interpolation for 20 we get the FCD value as 226 for 30 we are getting 220 the difference is for 10 we are getting 6 and my value is 21 point lambda value is 21.62 for that you are going by interpolation. So, FCD value is equal to 225.03 Newton per millimeter square that is 225.03 mega Pascals. Similarly, well let us calculate with respect to y y axis the slenderness ratio for that is 4000 by 50 0.8 or 78.74. So, you are looking into the class B there buckling class from the table 9 B refer to page number 41 of the code draw the tabla column get the value for 78.74 the value is nothing but FCD value. 70 it is 166 for 80 it is 150 mega Pascals. Now, go with the interpolation. I think you are master by this time in doing this calculation. So, uh, there is no need to repeat again and again the procedure of solving just have a look you will understand it yourself. FCD value along y y direction is 152.02. Now, compare both the values the axial permissible compressive stress along z z axis and y y axis then take the minimum of that for the design purpose. So, the value is 152.02 Newton per millimeter square get the load carrying capacity of the member it is stressed into area provided. So, it is 152.02 into area of the section is 11789 mm square divide this by 1000 you will get it as 1792.12 kilo newton which is greater than very much greater than 1650 kilotonne after factorizing. We are comparing with the factored load it is not very much higher very close to this therefore, the section whatever your design it is safe as well as economical. So, you can provide a section ISHB 450 at 92.5 kg per meter as a column section called as a stanchion. Now, you understood this problem a single I section problem where the effective length was given on one direction. Let us look into the next problem and see that what is the change we find it. In this problem your load is being given as factored load of 1050 kilo newton. Effective length is being given in two direction that is z z direction and y y direction. Along the z z direction it is 7 meters and along the y y direction it is 5 meters. Now, let us let me draw the 3D view of this I section connection. A beam has been attached to the column. Therefore, along the y y direction we are going to get the lesser depth or the length you can call 5 meters you are observing here means a beam has been attached this attachment can be made either by a framed angle section or by a seated angle section. We will study about all these things designing of the frames and the seated angles all these things in the later sessions. Now, along z z direction the length is 7 meters along y y direction that means, a beam has been provided along the direction of y y. If it is given in the other way that means, if it is along z z direction you can put it to the connect this beam to the web of the column section it can be connected we can see it in the uh, other examples where you can look into my notes where the link would have been where link will be provided 
so that you can understand the different types of problems. Yeah, I am taking only a typical problem to make you understand the concept. Factored load is being given directly. Area of the section required is load by FCD value. Once again, I assumed a lower stress of 150 Newton and you know the area to be searched here, it is equal to 70 centimeter square. I am looking into the road sections of ISHB itself, 70 close to 70 somewhere it comes. I will assume little bit more area so that the column would be safe. I am assuming taking the area equal to 85.91 centimeters much more than the area required. Why we are taking like this means the FCD value whatever you are assuming in the beginning it is not the correct one it is an assumption. We do not know what actually the stress will be developed in the member to know that itself we are going with an assumption. Therefore, you assume a little bit more area around 10 to 15 percent more than what is required and look into the table get the role selections. Now, we are let us try with ISHB 350 at 67.4 kg per meter column section and see that whether it is safe or not. Note on the other properties of the columns area you noted down, depth of the section is 350, width of the flange is 250 mm, thickness of the flange is 11.6, thickness of the web is 8.3 mm and the radius of gyrations for that it is 14.93 centimeters and 5.34 centimeter. So, uh, plotting all these things, dissection. Now, buckling class, it is same procedure, go with H by B F property, note on the calculate the value of H by B F for whatever the section you have chosen, you have chosen it is 350 by 250, 1.4, once again it is greater than 1.2 and the thickness of the flange is less than 40. Okay, that means, once again A and B axis for Z, Z and Y, Y axis respect A and B buckling class property for Z, Z and Y, Y axis respectively. Almost the procedure is same as the previous problem, but only the thing is length will differ in z z and y y direction. Previous case the effective length was same. Now, here effective length it is differs for z z direction it is 7 meters, no end condition is given directly they are given the effective length. So, we are making use of it. lambda is 46.82 for z z axis along the z z axis. Looking into the table 9 a of page number 40 of the code, let us go with the interpolation 40 13 for 50 it is 205, difference is 8 for 6.82 how much? it is 207.5 Newton per millimeter square. It is along z z axis. Similarly, get the value for y y axis, your length changes. It is not 7 meters, it is 5 meters that is 5000 mm by r y y 93.63. Looking into the table 9 b, from page number 41 of the code for 90 we are getting 134 MPA, for 100 it is 118 MPA, difference is 16. 
FCD along Y direction is 128.19 megapascals. The minimum value of this above two cases to be taken. It's 207.3 along Z and 128.19 along YY axis. Design stress is 128.19 megapascals. So load carrying capacity of this member is 1101.30 kilonewton, which is greater than 1050 kilonewton. Most economical section. This load carrying capacity is very much close to the factor load of 1050 kiloton. The section what we have chosen is an economical section and it is safe therefore provide the section, take that section as a design column. Now let us go with the another problem, third problem. See the difference between the first and the second problem. The load here it has been given as 2500 kiloton. The length of the column is 5 meters and the condition is effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at both the ends. Means to say that it is fixed at both the ends. Let us see what will be the value of K in the effective length and according to that calculate the effective length. So, here the load given is axial load we have to factor it by 1.5, it is 3750 kilo newton. The area of the section required is load by FCD value. Since it is carrying a heavy load, I am taking a little bit higher value of FCD around 200 newton per millimeter square I am taking. So, now the area required is 187.50 mm square. In the previous uh, table or the sections when you are choosing it, you have seen that the maximum area that was available was 117.89 centimeter square in the, from the steel table for a single rolled steel joist. Now, the required area is too mu very much high. So, what we are, can do is we can look into the rolled steel sections with cover plates on either side of the flanges to be used as columns. There are two types of sections will be there, either you can be used as a girder or used as a column section. Now, since we are designing the column sections, look into the table, steel table where you will get the properties for a rolled steel sections for flanges to be used. You have to look into that, not girders, do not get confused with that. Girders are the beams, we will use it when we design the beams for the as a built up section. Now, we are doing the columns, therefore, this built up columns, this table has to be referred. Now, the area required was some 180 something, I will take an area much more than that, say 192.96. So, that has got a additional cover plates at top and bottom of size equal to 320 mm by 20 mm and the section rolled section is ISHB 250 at 51 kg per meter. So, let us have a look on this section and analyze design it see that whether it has got a load carrying capacity much more than 3750 kilo newton. So, this is the section we are choosing. So, whatever the selection you have selected for that you note on the properties area is 192.96, the radius of garrison for that is 12.70 along z z direction centimeters, 8.17 centimeter along y y direction. the minimum of this is taken for calculation purpose. So, we have readily got this section, we are not putting any ex extra plate calculating separately, it is really readily available from the steel table. Therefore, I am going to look into the properties of radius of carrying directly. If these plates are not readily available, that means the thicknesses that are available, try to understand this 
have a look on the thicknesses from the steel table. The available thicknesses are 12 mm, 16, 20, 25, 32 and 40 mm. If you have anything in between these values, then you have to take the moment of inertia into consideration. Then from that we have to not model a section, moment of inertia. From there we have to design it. Right? Okay. So, whatever the section I have taken, selected for that, I am writing the cross section details. This is the isometric view of the section with the cover plate, the I section, roll steel section with cover plate on either side that can be either welded or bolted together along the length of the member that we will see later. In this video, I am not designing any of the bolts or the welding. You can do it, there is no problem. The slenderness ratio is calculated. It is scaled by R, R minimum you can take right now. So, end condition was given as both ends restrained. Therefore, you are going to take the value of k equal to 0.65. So, effective length reduces to 3250 mm from 5 meters, 5 mm, 5000 mm. The slenderness ratio lambda, it is 40. I have approximate nearly made it to 40, no need to go with the interpolation, we will take directly equal to 40 approximated. Buckling class for the built up section, you know very well, it is C class. So, you can look into the table 9C from page number 42 of the IS 800 code get the property, no need to go for any interpolation directly, the value of F C D is equal to how much? It is 198 mega Pascals, that is what you can note down here. The load carrying capacity of the member is equal to stress into area, stress into area we get uh, the load carrying capacity as 3820.61 kiloton, which is greater than 3750 kiloton required load or applied load. Therefore, the section is safe and also very economical. The load carrying capacity is very much close to 3750 kilonewton. So, you can provide it, it is safe. We provide a section of 250 at 51 kg per meter with additional core plates of size 320 by 20 mm, one on each side of the flange. Now, we will go into the next problem with a slight change. The load factor load is given as 4500 kilo newton. The length of the column is 5 meters. The end condition it is effectively held in position and direction. That means, it is both ends are fixed and you have to design the column with a cover plate of 18 mm. This is a plate only plate available there. That means to say, we cannot look into the table there. Already in the previous problem, you observed that I expressed there the available thicknesses are only 12, 16, 20, 25, 32 and 40 mm. Only if those plates thicknesses are there, then we can look into the table or otherwise we have to calculate the radius of gyration from the moment of inertia of the sections whatever we are going to choose by applying the parallel axis theorem. So, let us see the procedure of solving the problem and Whenever you get doubt, you just go back and see that what is the difference between that problem and this problem, so that you will clearly understand the concept. So, as usual, we go with calculating the area required for the section. As I said earlier, I am taking the IR value, say 200, up to 250 I can go, but I am limiting myself. So, the area required is 225 centimeters square. So, as I said earlier, the maximum available 
area from for ISHB 450 is a 119.87 mm square centimeter square. So, it is much more than that. Let us find out the difference for that. This is the area available for the single section. I will take a single rolled section, then afterwards put the cover plate of 18 mm thick on either side, find out the width for this. So, we are trying with this section, it has got an area of 117.89 mm square, 111 sorry not mm square centimeter square, convert that into mm square. Note on the other properties like h and b, depth of the section and breadth of the section. So, instead of going with radius of gyration, I am going with the moment of inertia. Then afterwards for the built up section, let us calculate the radius of gyration for this. So, area required was 225 centimeter square, available area is 117.89 centimeter square. So, what will be the area taken up by the cover plates? Let us calculate. The area taken up by the two cover plates will be equal to 107.11 centimeter square, 225 minus the available one. This is what is required. Let us calculate the area for one cover plate. It is 55356 mm square. For this area, thickness of the plate has been already given. The available plate thickness is 18 mm. You can find out the breadth of the plate. Breadth of the plate is equal to that is width of the plate is equal to area of one cover plate divided by thickness of the plate available. You will get 297.56 mm. Now, you can check the next IS number, IR number and do calculate and see that whether the load carrying capacity of the section is greater than 4500 kiloton. I worked out with 300 mm, 320, but I did not get the load much more than 4500 kiloton. Therefore, I am directly assuming here as 330 mm. You can find it here. This is I have chosen not randomly, I worked out separately and after I found it less than the load carrying capacity of the column section less than 4500. Therefore, I revised it number of times and I am going with this value and it is not rule. You try once or twice and whichever gives the greater value you just adopt it. So, we are going with a plate of thickness 330 by 18 mm, one on each side of the flanges. Now, you can see the section here. The isometric view of this section. This is for this properties, we have to calculate the moment of inertia and other things. For this section, you have to make a check for the local buckling. What is local buckling? Whatever the cover plate we are given, this should not buckle due to the application of the load. That means, we have to go calculate this outstanding with respect to this outstanding width. Outstanding width is nothing but the width of the plate minus the width of the flange of the col column divided by that by 2 on either side. That outstanding width divided by the thickness of the member, uh, thickness of the member is nothing but plate shall not be greater than 16. If it is greater, we have to revise this section by increasing the thickness. Now, let us see that whether it is less than 16 or not. 330 is the width of the plate minus width of the flange divided by 2, it is the top outstanding width divided by thickness of the plate under consideration that is 18, it is 2.22 less than 16, very much safe. Now, get the total area of the built up column, area of the standard roll steel section plus the area of the two cover plates. It is 23669 mm square. Now, for this properties, let us calculate the moment of inertia about z z and y y axis. You are already very much you know how to calculate the moment of inertia of the built up sections. In the analysis problem, 
we have done more number of problems so that it would be easy for you to understand. Now, moment of inertia of the flange plate has to be transferred on to the built up section z z axis by applying the parallel axis theorem. I g is the moment of inertia about its centroidal axis, a is the area of the cover plate, h is the distance between these two axis of the plate and the axis of the built up section. So, all this type of problems already we have done in the analysis same style no change. I g is nothing but B d cube by 12, area of this plate is 330 into 18, h is the distance from here to the center of the plate, it is 450 by 2 plus 18 by 2. Plug all these values into the I z z of the built up section, I z z is this much. 4034.9 into 10 power of 4 plus 2 times the moment of finish of the cover plates. It is 1.05 into 10 to the power of 9 mm to the power of 4. So, I y y of the built up section it is same. So, we know the I y y of the built up section these two plates ex axis passes exactly to the centroid of the plate therefore, it is a d b cube by 12, it is t b cube by 12, d is 18, b is 330 cube by 12, two times you are multiplying because two plates. So, after this note down the minimum value, again the minimum radius of gyration, it is 76.43 mm. After this effective slenderness ratio, you know the KL value to be obtained from page 45 of the code for the end condition that it is restrained and in rotation as well as in direction that means both ends have been fixed. Therefore, the value of K works out to be 0.65. So, get the KL value, it is 3250 mm, then the slenderness ratio lambda is 42.52 phi 2. Buckling class for the built up section is C. Therefore, you are going to look into the buckling class C that is page 9, page number 42 of the code table 9 C. By interpolation get the value for 194.22 Newton per millimeter square. Load carrying capacity of the member is stress into area, it is 4597 kilonewton, which is greater than 4500 safe as well as economical. Very close to this 4500 we got, it is safe and economical. Therefore, you provide a curve I section of ISHB 450 at 92.5 kg per meter with the plate plates of size 330 by 18 mm. Okay. Hope you understood the different types of problems, how to design the pro different types of problems. If you like it, please do comment on this and if you are not subscribed, do subscribe to my channel to get more this kind of educational videos. Thank you very much.